All right, we have to talk about the Pixel 6 and the Pixel 6 Pro and kind of in a broader way, we have to talk about the tech community reviews and how these things are received. So let's lay out some history here real quick before I immediately jump into getting myself potentially into some trouble and making people mad at me. It's something that I do from time to time around here and it's something that I might do again today. But like I said, Let's jump into some history here, some background about what we're talking about today. So months ago, we started getting these leaks about Pixel 6. I am convinced that Google is behind these leaks and that they do it intentionally because it keeps people talking about the Pixel 6, right? So they leak a little bit of information, a little breadcrumb, right? And then everybody like myself makes a video talking about what they just talked about, what the leak said. And then a few weeks later, here's another little breadcrumb. So then what do we do? We all make another video. And this happens over and over and over until every tech YouTuber has made 37 videos about Pixel 6. And now because of that, there's a ton of hype because there's this thing that happens where, you know, we get a leak about the camera hardware. It's supposed to be higher resolution. So then what are you going to say when you talk about it being a higher resolution sensor? You're going to say, well, hey, the Pixel 5 on back to the Pixel 2 use the same 12 megapixel sensor. So, hey, this is supposed to be higher res going to be a better camera then right then we get information saying oh there's going to be a, a periscope telephoto lens hey we don't have that on here it's going to be a better camera so we're seeing the same sorts of things over and over better camera hey they're going to have a, a new system on a chip with a built-in custom isp image signal processing pipeline hey it's gonna be a better camera and so this hype builds and builds and builds and it percolates and percolates until eventually you think this is good for Google, right? Because, of course, Google wants you to be hyped up about their new device. They want you to be excited about it. But here's the problem. It percolates until it's at a level where it cannot possibly live up to that kind of hype. And that's, I think, what happened with Pixel 6. When this thing was coming out, before it was out for people to see it in their hands, this thing was going to be the greatest phone that ever existed. And then they said the price was $599 and $899. Oh my God, it's the greatest phone that ever existed. And it's undercutting everybody. It's going to revolutionize the world. It's going to change the world. And look, I know that people weren't explicitly saying what I'm saying. They weren't saying it was going to change the world necessarily. But there was a ton of hype. And the expectations for Pixel 6 were as high as for any phone I've ever seen, especially here recently with, you know, these iterative releases. I mean, you go from the Z Fold 2 to the Z Fold 3, and it was like, eh, it's a little better. You go from the Z Flip 2 to the Z Flip 3, eh, it's a little better. How about going from the Pixel 5 to the Pixel 5a? Yeah, it's about the same. What about iPhone 12 to iPhone 13? Yeah, it's a little bit better. So the Pixel 6 was supposed to be this, like, colossal leap forward and that's what we all expected right and look i'm not here to tell you that pixel 6 is some bad phone look i don't even have one i had i didn't buy one it's like i'm not i'm not gonna tell you it's good or bad but what i will tell you is that the reviews indicate it's a pretty darn good phone yet if you go on the tech twitter sphere what you may see is this general consensus from a lot of people that Pixel 6 was judged unfairly, that it was effectively crushed in some way, that some of these big reviewers went out of their way to crush the Pixel 6 or to favor the iPhone or what have you. And I, I just don't know that that's what's happening because I've watched a lot of these reviews. And again, caveat here, I don't have the Pixel 6. But if we look at the information that was provided, right, we should be able to kind of make some assessment as to if there was some grand biased scheme at play here to just dump hate all over the Pixel 6. And I don't think that there was some unfair campaign of hate against the device. And I've got some evidence here, right? So first off, let's look at some examples I've seen of some unfair hate being thrown, being levied against the Pixel 6. 
So the first thing we got to look at here is the review from MKBHD. This review has 4.2 million views while I'm looking at it right now. And the thing that he talks about here that a lot of people took issue with, in addition to the general tone of the video, people thought that his tone was too negative. When I watched the review, I didn't get a negative tone. I actually thought he seemed to like it quite a bit. But this part here people got really upset about and it's concerning the battery life. Let's take a look now. Pretty great sometimes. Now, something I thought would be better with Tensor is battery life. And you know, maybe I was getting my hopes up too high because what I saw Apple do with their silicon has been amazing. Like their chips are basically the pinnacle of efficiency, not to compare too much, but when I see iPhone 13 Pro Max getting eight plus hours of screen on time easy, with a 4,300 milliamp hour battery. That's pretty amazing. So now I see Pixel 6 come out, 4,600 milliamp hour battery in the Pixel 6 and 5,000 milliamp hours in the 6 Pro, and they design their own chips. So I was thinking this would be amazing. It's not. So I was consistently getting three and a half to four and a half hours of screen on time on the Pixel 6 Pro and slightly less on the 6. Okay, so like that's not very good battery life. A lot of people said that the Surface Duo 2 has terrible battery life. Well, its battery life is better than that. It's I'm consistently getting four and a half-ish hours. So that's not great, right? And people thought, well, that's crazy because they got their own Pixel 6 and they're saying, I'm getting way better battery life than that. In fact, let's look at some Twitter users that I follow and I'll show, you, I'll show you exactly what I mean. So Jason here said, I got five and a half hours with 35% left. How about Brandon Lee from This Is Tech Today? 20 hours off the charger with the 6 for six hours of screen on time. That's very good. What about Galen's gadgets? He said he got seven hours of screen on time. So what's going on here? Why, why did Marquez get such a low screen on time? Well, we got to keep going here because there's, there's more than just this one example. Let's jump to the Waveform podcast because he talked about it a bit more and David Amell talked about his battery life experience as well. Keep in mind, these are before the release of the device. Tensor advantage, yeah. Yep. I want to talk about a, a thing I was surprised by, which is the battery life not being that great. Yeah. So I haven't published the video yet, so we'll see. And I'm going to watch other people's reviews once I publish this, but I'm very curious what your experience and thoughts were with the battery because I thought it would be amazing. Yeah. I thought it could have been amazing. Yeah, I got like a little over three to three and a half hours of screen on time. You got a little better, right? Yeah, on the Pro, I was seeing like around four. But okay, so here we are again. Now we got a second person in this studio who is saying they're only getting three and a half, four hours of screen on time on their Pixel 6 or Pixel 6 Pro. What is going on here? Well, we got more to look at as well. We got to keep going here because another reviewer who I love and respect very, very deeply, they've always been such a great unbiased reviewer, and that is Mr. Mobile had something very similar to say. Let's take a look. The only consistent low point I can point to as we wind down here is battery life. I mean, it's, it's a full day phone, but I get closer to empty a lot sooner in the evening than I like. And on top of that, it's really tough to diagnose what the main drains are because of Android 12's new power consumption report, another area where form over function was probably taken too far. So another reviewer, and again, someone who's always been a such a reliable reviewer to me, saying, hey, my Pixel 6 battery life wasn't that great, despite, like I mentioned, these reports on Twitter. And you can find tons of them, oodles of them. You can also find oodles of them saying the opposite. Here's MTG saying three hours of screen on time. Here's another guy saying three and a half to four and a half hours of screen on time. That's not terrible, but it's not five and a half, it's not six, and it's not seven. So there's this wildly varying battery life on Pixel 6. Now, there's a lot of things we can look at here that might be able to explain this. One, everybody uses their phone differently. So screen on time isn't like this catch-all battery me metric, right, that you're just going to just tell you if the battery life is good or not, because different screen brightnesses and different apps use wildly different amounts of batteries. So keep that in mind as well. That's going to help smooth out some of this variation here. But we also have to keep in mind that these reviewers were using the Pixel 6 before release. Could software updates have improved this battery life? 
Another thing is that Pixel is known for using its adaptive battery type thing where over days and days and days, the battery life does improve. It's going to be really interesting to hear if MKBHD does later on say, hey, my battery life has gotten much better because I've seen that on Twitter as well. But at the end of the day, we have to ask ourselves one really important question, and that is, are these reviewers, are these Twitter users simply so biased that they are either straight up lying about their battery life experience or that they are purposely handicapping it in some way, doing things to drain the battery more quickly so that they can talk about how much better the iPhone's battery is or how bad, quote unquote, Pixel 6's battery is. And I just don't know how we could possibly make that kind of statement. We can say, hey, my Pixel 6 battery life was better than that. Fair enough. There's many factors that could respond or could be responsible for that happening. But I don't think you can say that there's bias here without real evidence. All you have is evidence is that their experience was different than yours. But lots of people's experience is different than yours, right? So let's move on to something that's even more subjective, but it's something that I see pointed out all the time on this topic, and it is the camera performance on the Pixel 6. So supposedly on damn near every video review you can watch from the big reviewers, they will show you a Pixel 6 picture and then an iPhone picture and the Pixel 6 picture is clearly the better photo and then they will favor the iPhone. That's what I've been told, that's what I've read. But here's the thing, I've watched these videos and I've looked at samples. I'm going to show you some samples from some people on Twitter. Now, these people are, you know, like I'm not calling out any of these people I've shown. I'm not saying, oh, these people are biased. This is just raw data from normal users that I'm using. And it happen to be people that I follow on Twitter that you should also follow on Twitter. That's kind of why I'm showing them to you. Anyways, when I see these photo comparisons, Sometimes I pick the Pixel, sometimes I pick the iPhone. And that's what the reviewers were saying. So my experience watching these biased reviewers was kind of that I just agreed with most of what they were saying. They, the Pixel and the iPhone seemed to just trade blows. Let's look at some examples here on Twitter. This is Mike V, a great guy on Twitter. Good stuff all around. So on this one here, Pixel 6 on the left, iPhone Pro on the right. This is night mode. In this instance here, Pixel 6 looking good. iPhone 13, I think, looks too contrasty. I don't think that looks very good at all. They've dialed the contrast up too high. I would take the Pixel 6 in this instance. Let's go to another image here from RJ Tech, which shot got it better. iPhone 13 Pro here, Pixel 6 here. I think these are both really good pictures. It's going to come down to, to me, what do you prefer, a cooler tone or a warmer tone? That's really the only difference in these images. Look at the sky. Look at the clouds up here in the corner. They look pretty similar. I mean, you could say maybe the Pixel 6 has the dynamic range and the clouds a little bit better. You get more a bit more detail there. I don't know. Maybe the clouds have moved a little bit. I mean, all in all, these are both really good pictures. You may say the Pixel 6 looks better. You may say the iPhone looks better. This is subjective. They both look really good to my eye. Here's another one from Snazzy Q, Quinn himself, Quinn Nelson, big uh, Apple guy. So we have Pixel 6 here. Looks really good. Looks really sharp. How about the iPhone here? The color palette's different and the zoom is different. So I would have preferred if he had came in a little bit closer here to compare these two. Am I crazy here to look at this and not be able to tell you that one is a, you know, a million miles better than the other? This is subjective preference. And then here we've got Pixel 6 and an iPhone. You would be hard pressed to even tell the difference between these two pictures. I could mix them around and you probably would be able to tell which one was which. It's also really worth watching this video that I will put in the description down below where they, this guy, Grant Likes Tech, fantastic YouTuber here goes back and forth on some pixel photos and some iPhone photos. And when I go back and forth between them, okay, here on this picture, I prefer the pixel. Let's move ahead to the next one. We zoom in a bit further. I actually think the iPhone might have better detail, but it's really, really close. How about here? Pixel 6 Pro on this picture, iPhone 13 Pro there. I like the iPhone picture better there. And as I go through this video, because I've watched this video, I basically do that. I go back and forth on it. Sometimes it's Pixel, sometimes it's iPhone. What am I getting at here? What I'm getting at here 
is that this idea that the Pixel 6 is just a way better camera than the iPhone or than any other phone on it or camera on any other phone, yet people in the reviews keep using the other phone because they're biased. I just don't see it and I don't agree. I don't have a Pixel 6, but I can look at the samples that people post and I can tell you what I see and what I choose. And I choose to think they're both really good. And, and look, fair enough if you look at it and you prefer every Pixel photo every time. I'm going to kind of have a hard time believing that. And maybe I'd wonder if this was a blind test, if you would make the same choices. But that's your subjective opinion. And it's, it is objectively true that there is not some valley of quality between the Pixel and any other smartphone camera right now when we're talking about the top-end flagships. There just isn't. They're both really good. And when you compare video like Grant has done here as well, I mean, it's a similar type of affair. In some shots, iPhone. Some shots, Pixel. There's one last thing I want to touch on when it comes to Pixel 6. Because you'll hear from some people that Pixel 6 has some bugs. There's some problems. Android 12-related problems. And from other people, you hear a minimization of that exact thing going on. It's, I don't have that going on. I'm not affected by that. That's not really a big deal, whatever. Let's look at some examples here. We got Viper here, the man about tech himself. Twitter app not running well. Other people reporting the same thing. This is more than likely, as Joe says here, this is an Android 12 problem. But hey, Pixel 6 is running Android 12. It's fair to criticize the Pixel 6 for having bugginess and weird problems going on. Even if it is an Android 12 problem, that's the operating system that it's running. So it's a Pixel 6 problem too. How about this tweet that I quoted here from Trent's Tech about his Pixel 6 Pro system UI not responding over and over and over, YouTube Studio crashing, all sorts of weird things like that going on. And I can show you many more of these examples of just weird bugs and glitches and things going on. Again, this is a, an Android 12 problem. Pixel 6 runs Android 12. This is a Pixel 6 problem, and it will likely get fixed. But what I don't like seeing is a minimization of this, acting like it's not happening, like it's not a big deal. Here's the reality. I had an iPhone 13 on one hand and a Pixel 6 in the other hand. Right now, today, and I was going to give one of them to my mom or someone like that. I'm going to give her the iPhone. Because I can't give her the Pixel 6 and say, yeah, 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 stuff might crash and stuff might be glitchy for you. Maybe it will, maybe it won't, but it'll get fixed later. I'm just going to give her the phone that's running better right now, and, and that's probably the iPhone. Now, in three months, it might not be. It might be the Pixel 6. They may hash this out, and it may be rock solid, but you can't review a device on what's going to happen. Looking at you, Surface Duo running Android 10 still. If there's anyone that understands the community, who loves a phone wanting to minimize the problems of a phone, it's this guy. The phone has some problems. It's not perfect. It might get there, but we're not reviewing the phone in the future. We're talking about it now. The reviews are now. So guys, here's how I want to close this video down. I understand the hype around Pixel 6. I understand why people love the device. But please, before you start going out and slandering people, calling people biased, saying that they're a shill, that you can't understand, their review was disgusting, please consider that people have different experiences. Please understand that you're saying that they're lying in their video. And if you're wrong, that's pretty messed up. I've had people in my comments tell, say that I was lying about something when I wasn't. That kind of hurts. It's not fun to read that someone called you a liar publicly on the internet when you know you didn't lie. When you know that they don't have any evidence that, that you lied about anything. So when you're going to call Marquez Brownlee a liar, simply because his battery life was different than yours, despite the fact that there are many things that could explain this battery life difference. When you're going to call Mr. Who's the Boss a liar for saying that he very, very tiny preferred the iPhone 13's camera over the Pixel 6. That's his subjective preference. He's allowed to have an opinion, right? We're all biased. We all have a bias. You may think you don't, but you're wrong. You do. It's about managing and it's about being honest about your bias. Let's just be careful about this because we're talking about expensive devices that people spend their hard-earned cash on and then they become emotionally invested in. 
When you buy that Pixel 6, you're emotionally invested in that device. When I buy my $1,500 Surface Duo, I'm emotionally invested in it. And when someone criticizes it and says it's a buggy piece of shit or whatever, I have to temper my emotions and not get upset and not say, hey man, that's not true. You shouldn't say that. I have to find a way to be respectful. And if I even bother responding, which I largely just won't, I don't understand. My bias is that I like a dual screen device. I'm likely to overlook problems that other people might not so that I can have a dual screen device. Other people may not be the same and I have to do my best to understand that. Some people are going to prefer pictures that look a certain way. They may be used to their iPhone. That might be their preference. You may be used to the Pixel. That's your preference. So let's try our best to be more understanding and less quick to call strangers on the internet liars and to say such mean things about each other because of a difference in preference or a difference in experience. Guys, this was a bit of a long video. If you made it to the end, kudos. Thanks a ton. Thanks for hitting that subscribe button or that join button if you have chosen to do so. Stay tuned for more content just like this. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.